just discuss as if like Murad can um, practice for defense without. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, good morning, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. This is my design for the bus terminal, the North Bus Terminal. One, one of the uh, design problems I tried, I was I tried to solve is the uh, 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 accessibility, sustainability, and uh, overall traffic, and also the, the efficiency of how how the building can uh, can uh, receive more natural resources. So mm. the way I I solve it is first is for for the natural resources I I oriented my building in a way that the the long the longer side of my building is catching all of the uh, natural wind basing on the wind rose diagram it's uh, the, the angle of the wind rose diagram is uh, perpendicular to the to the long the longer side of my building which in which in the in result the, the building must be able to receive and get all of the natural wind. And also for the sun path, it, uh, uh, with the uh, eaves of my building, and also with the trees of the in the public park, it was able to, and also with, uh, with my uh, exterior facade, which is, uh, Sun baffles, which will, uh, will be shown in the next yeah. slide. Yeah, it you will show be, it out. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, sir. Ah, okay. Uh, it will be. It will. It will not only uh, give shade to the to the interiors, but also helps uh, give like a like and no obstruction of wind flow to the interior and also with with the sun path with also with with a sun diagram sun path diagram i i placed the, the solar panels in accordance to the sun path which is a yeah, yeah. also for accessibility i i located the entrance and the uh, uh, public park closer to SMCT, which in, in result gives uh, the users from the, from the SMCT, especially those who are uh, uh, disabled, disabled, can reach and safely uh, and safely travel to the terminal without any problems and also i also place her here like the, the pedestrian island which gives uh which gives uh for, for example those who are in wheelchairs and have island. It, uh which calls that sir the that the pedestrian crossing where there's a there's a hump oh race crossing a race cro race crossing for uh so that for the uh, example for the for the wheelchairs and also to to help slow down the traffic for the pedestrians and also a a better uh, flow for the flow circulation for the pedestrians And for the access for the traffic flow, I located my entrance also in the in the least uh, 
and in the list uh, uh, not, not so uh, used road to avoid any uh, pen, uh, pending traffic because of people because of cars going inside inside the, the building and and I located also in my entrance at the opposite <clears throat> opposite side of the of the entrance and for the arrival of the bus it's from the from the national road then they go inside to the uh, inside then they park they park to for the arrival where people where the users will just uh, go down and go inside their arrival bay and for departure they will uh for departure the users will go go out and go in the the bus then after that the the bus will now go go out to the uh, to the Kaohsiung road which is its, its exit <clears throat> i think it would help if you zoom in put with the areas yeah, you have full control of the image oh yeah that's right here yeah <laughs> yeah yes, okay see you for Diane. Yeah, ten more minutes. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, okay. Ah, yes. Here my perspective, sir. So, my exterior facade and the uh, bus parking view, and also my ground floor view and my second floor food court area. For 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 my floor plan, sir, there are key features present in the ground. Floor. Floor. One of it is the open lobby and segregation of the use of public and private areas, like the segregation of waiting areas and concessional spaces, which helps the flow of the users. It also has an entrance towards a public park to help users relax and also give them entertainment. It also have, have a small planting area, which gives a feeling that nature is inside building, as well as the columns and structural beams. It have the texture of wood which makes the building feel part of the na of nature as well. So having a second information area at the center of the building can help accommodate different passengers in, in different areas of the building, whether it will be from the public park, from the exit area, from the arrival area, or from the departure area, or from the entrance. entrance. Uh, they, will, they will be uh, accommodated, and they'll be accommodated uh, the different passages in the area with these. The entrance of the building being located on the 12 meter road because it not only gives less buffering to the traffic, but it also helps people, especially people with disability from SM City, Cebu, navigate and enter with ease. With elevators, ramps, and escalators, people with disability can really get to their destination safety um james like whenever you name a space i think it's much better you zoom into that space so that oh. Kita, oh, zoom i know you have your script there but... <laughs> okay, there, sir. Mm. Here. There, sir. oh and trans here sir then information mm. system like a general information system and here sir is for the entrance mm. and here's like the, the small planting area then I segregated it, segregated the spaces of the public, uh, I like those uh, concessional spaces. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, CD. And then you and mentioned your wall mounted TV. Uh -huh. uh, what's that? Now, now you mentioned there is some text, you have wall mounted TV, so where, uh, where are they? I don't know, ceiling mounted. A uh, ceiling mounted day. Eh? Ceiling mounted. Ah, okay. So yes, where are they? Same on plan. Uh, it's I think in the ceiling plan, sir. But here it's, it can be shown in the. Ah, okay. The, so, uh, like when you present Vital, um, like you're talking about the features of your design, 
Mas maigid, you have the picture of your design on the screen. Para mas kawan bitaw mas uh, close in the presentation. So think uh, of, think about kana bitaw present ka sa like any presentation. So whenever you discuss something, the the thing that you're discussing should be on screen. Uh, okay. Okay. Sige. Uh, anything okay. else? So how did you solve? Uh, we have like we're supposed to end at eight twenty, but I can I guess we can extend until eight twenty five. How did you solve the circulation problem? Like that was in your introduction, man. Uh, I saw the, uh, the overall uh, uh, user circulation is is by uh, by having one is by having a a bigger area. Uh, for this, a bigger a bigger. Uh, if paglisod ka pwede ra ibisaya. And if uh, dako ang area sir ba for circulation of the people inside inside the building where in risk it will not uh it will not give any living traffic and traffic inside the, inside the building. Mm -hmm. How how will people like um okay, before mugi uh, agihanan padung sa terminal? What is the kanang new improvement in one ang people from SM can get into the terminal? Uh, uh what sir? Uh, again sir. Na na choppy ba? Hello. Uh, uh, okay, okay. So, diba, the whole point of design was to improve accessibility sa SM terminal, uh, North Bus terminal. Yes, sir. Diba? So, number one, talk about how did you improve accessibility for the users, the pedestrians? How did you do it? Oh, uh, firstly, sir, is that <clears throat> before they en enter the, the building, there is this. Uh, Elevated pedestrian walkway. Mm -hmm. There also there are also ramps. Also there are PW parking with ramps as well. Then there's elevators for for the for the uh, wheelchairs and also escalators if they don't if they are having problems in climbing up the stairs for people. For other people, and also I I segregated the uh, depart from from the entrance. They'll go straight to the departure area, with uh, which will not uh, interfere with the people from from the arrival bay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, if they're going from the from the departure area, we'll go inside, and just we'll just stay here so they will not interfere the people from our from arriving who will go out and go outside exit arrival so there will be no interference and also mm -hmm. with the people coming from the public park mm -hmm. okay. um, what will happen if the people from the arrival would what would like to go to sm uh I I actually labeled it sir from entrance and exit. Oh yeah, you labeled it, bro. Explain ng how. Can uh, I you 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 sell it to a client bitaw. Uh, uh, they could uh they could uh, uh they could able to uh, use the public park because it is not on, it, it will not be that that faster because it is shaded because of the abundant trees and which also gives them uh it also gives them uh a new uh and a new uh experience for them in, in enter in in the terminal okay so kumo is as a public park i know what my canning race platform or race crosswalk but connecting the public park to sm or or na abas yeah I will not keep 
<laughs> okay, la, okay. La. So these are the oh, small no. details na bitaw. Okay, so how did you fix the kaning uh, bus parking? I think that's another big uh, design issue. Oh, that's it. How did you fix the bus parking? So for the bus parking, sir, uh, I did the uh, 30 degree parking. And so from the, from, the, from the departure in Arrival Bay, there's uh, stairs and ramps. And and with that, sir, uh, if they want to, if they are looking for, uh, first thing, sir, if they're looking for their their bus, they can either uh, go to the TV, sir, uh, the ceiling of the TV, or I place also a those infor information boards in front of the buses, mm -hmm. which can be seen here, sir, like uh, this one, sir. Okay. Uh, zoom in the parts of video. Someone aja. Okay. Yeah. It's like a small information board for the, for the buses. And okay. either they, they, so the peop, uh, people who want to board the bus can either go in here, go in the buses, and they can or they can if their bus is at, at the right wing, they can pass through this pedestrian walk, walkway. Uh, okay. Then they'll board the bus here. So uh, I think another question would be, um, which one is the buses that are arriving and which ones are the buses that are departing? Uh, the buses who will be who will be departing will be most likely at the left side this part, sir. Mm -hmm. So when, when they want to go, uh, when they, the bus is already, after the bus is already empty, they can go back and can go, go to the right side or go to the top left or top right okay so mm, loading is a uh, left side meaning people will go into the bus uh, unloading sir would be like the bottom left and the uh, and the loading would be the top left top right and bottom right ah okay so uh unloading are getting bottom left then top is kanang loading yes sir okay uh i'm asking because you have the arrival bay here next to the buses in front of it so the buses in front of the arrival bay are only unloading it could be also sir for loading sir so mostly it is for un un unloading ah so kanisha mrag minor lang na issue bitaw so you have our arrival arrival bay here and then they have to walk further away to get to the buses that they want or like um oh, what's that wait arrival base like they're coming off of the bus day sorry yeah sir, yes, sir. <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay that's good uh let's see here and then the departure bay that's where they're coming into sm and they're getting into the bus okay okay yes, now i get it okay, okay um yeah i was wondering about that okay let's look at let's see elevations how did you figure out your on what is the concept behind this elevation so uh so for for first sir, is that uh, uh i was talking about sir before the about the sun uh, sun baffles or vertical millions mm -hmm. then after i was thinking about that the uh the the site is located near like near the pier or the sea, mm -hmm. and also I remembered about tropical tropical that the Cebu is a tropical uh, city, mm -hmm. so I I managed to make the facade like a a wave form, like a zigzag form or a wave form, which which, which mostly represents like the the uh, the, the waves of the sea. Like, like for the that which uh which is like uh which which uh, describes uh the city as a tropical area tropical area tropical city okay Sigi. Uh, can you show us uh the perspectives uh, the perspective or muna to sa front muna to, sir. Wala kay kanang full area uh wala, sir. I, I can, uh, I okay uh, let's see uh let's look at your sections now 
Uh, we have to go on to the next yes, yes. student here. Let's see. So you have your solar panels there. Um, let's see. Can you zoom in a bit, same on cross section. Okay. What was the kind of determining factor for your floor to ceiling height? Uh, for my floor to ceiling height, I. Uh, what do you mean by the determining factor, sir? Now, what was the reason you made your floor to ceiling height like that? Like. Four meters, na, di ba? Or like, is it less? Like, na pa? Ah, yeah, four meters, sir. Mm -hmm. Uh, it it will not, it's not it's not showing, sir, but there's still a tiny gap between the the uh, the, the beams and the ceiling. And the mm. Ceiling. So why did but you make I, it? I, but I'm still I'm just using a cassette type. Mm. Of, of the build of the building of the aircon which is like most it's not a duct it's not a duct but it's mostly like a pipe also as well so it, it can pass through so yeah uh, that's my determining factor so it's just like it's just to give space to the to the piping works so. Mm. so additional um so, pila man ngayon ang floor to ceiling? Uh, floor to Did ceiling. Slab to slab? Floor to ceiling, sir, is 3,000, 3.2. 3.2. Okay, so now you have like um, room for your cassette aircon and then you have like a uh, sort of a high ceiling. Do you know what the minimum floor to ceiling height is? Uh a uh, floor to seal 2.5 2.7 <laughs> <Seven. laughs> so mm -hmm. ana lang para may ni mo fourth year so yes, sir. Yes, sir. so tag time okay na kasi you're the first one so muna siya ang flow for everyone like we want to talk about your design and then if you're talking about a space in your building please show that space on the screen uh james you'll get a pass okay? you're the first one man and i know like even me i'm like super <laughs> but oh, that's good first that was a good first attempt i'll give some comments in your canvas so thank you for that you are free <laughs> uh what you mean pass like i passed the i passed i passed uh and presentation it's 30 ah, okay. points ah, okay sir okay sir yeah i still need to like check your design you the next uh i like I'll be more cutty with the design. <laughs> oh, sir. No problem, sir. Sige, sige. Uh, let's see. You got your da -da 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 utilities, structural. Okay, my own building simple, rectangular form. Okay, good. Okay, sir. Okay. So, Murag na umut ka gamay sa beginning. I don't know. I, I wanted you to like <laughs> give you a chance to present from Murag. Ganahan na kayo focus sa mong first page. <laughs> Okay, sorry, sorry, sir. Okay, okay. Sige, uh, Sumayo, Hana, are you okay, ready? Sir. Thank, you. Thank you, sir. All right. Here, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, please share your screen. So, yeah, uh, I gave James a bit of a pass there, okay, first mancha. So, if possible, try to get through your building design in the first 10 minutes so we can have a Q&A in the next 10 minutes. Okay, and then try to try to sell me on your design. Okay, so good morning, everyone. This is my Cebu North bus terminal. So it's called Mirador. It's a Spanish word. Um, uh, it adapts a Filipino as uh, overlooking, as a term for overlooking or terrace. So, ang main con problems nga ako nakita sa um terminal mismo sa current kay it's kind of okay open shop pero like nai uban terminals na enclosed di kayo nil alimuot um uh, they mm -hmm. rely on exhaust fans yung ano. um it's uh like for example like sa simala gay but dili siya ka there is a terminal but alimuot gin siya to then um more people Kanang go there kay maga maga init siya. Then mm -hmm. um, I thought of that concept uh, sa terminal, so I made it kanang open lang sa so, ang back of the house lang ang uh, I did not include 
that as open kaya their their offices they they need kind of spaces para sa visitor nga comfortable so my design embodies uh, three concepts lang so mm-hmm. it's open terminal um, amenities plus access and uh, green touch open terminal kay as i said kanina uh, it's very congested and um, it's uh, it's good for para guys so weather sa pinas ka pertigyung inita the next is amenities plus access now for this one um, i focused more on ramps and uh, as you can see here there is um, ramps entrance Mm-hmm. Then, um, sa amenities kay, I actually included a clinic. Uh, it was not in the, it was not in the requirements. But yes, I think kay, egan mangud no kuya pan sa terminal so, or like maybe if may mga nak or anything. The emergencies, yeah. Can yes, you show sir. the clinic on the screen? Yes, sir. Wait. Um, here, sir. Where is it? Okay. There, sir. That's the clinic. Okay. So, mm-hmm. nasa sa space where kanang the offices are. Okay, mm-hmm. aircon man siya. Okay, dapat man comfy ang patient ano. Mm-hmm. Okay, so mana siya ang sa amenities plus access. Um, as well as wait, where is it? Ah, okay, never mind, sir. Sorry. Okay, naluwala ko. Um, mm-hmm. so sa so green touch. Now, if mo tanaw ka sa terminal, gay wala ilay trees kayo. Dito ra ka sa adjacent, which is uh, SM City Cebu. Dito ra kitag trees. Mm. Then um mostly gay diri gay dapita. Kay maglakaw ra sila sa dan, ang sidewalk mm. there is ganang railed siya. And it's mm. sad. So <laughs> ang uh, sa akong design kay just kaning mga plants lang sa mga uh, level sa human. Uh, they're actually shrubs lang sa. Mm-hmm. Okay, so dire lang na siya sa entrance kay para like level lang nila ang green. Then, mauna siya ang ako aerial perspective. Okay. Siya. okay. Now, um, kaning a roof, ah, sorry. Uh, kaning a roof kay like forest siya, dili siya equal ta nun kay um, I also have for the green touch kanang rainwater harvesting, sir. Mm-hmm. So, bali, impluvium system siya from the Roman times. Uh, you can you can actually kanang use rainwater, gali, sir, for tubig sa terminal. Yep. That's what okay. rainwater catching is, yep. So, uh, for the site mismo, na ako ay like um, features dani, so it has subtractive roofs, so kaning kaya siya kaya nani circle dere, so light goes in, then naapun ni sa skylight dere, cause light goes in, then naapun dere siya yung mga atrium, so that light goes in also. Okay. Uh, also here, sir, and sa food park. Um, Nalang ko fascination for subjective roofs kay um, the sun goes here at 10 a.m. Kanisha. So mm-hmm. it eventually just goes to site like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, kanisha, sir. Then next is an angled roof, which I said kanina for easier na rainwater uh, mm-hmm. collection. Curved parking base. So, um, akong design is pa like that siya. Yeah, radial. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then, um, a mediator or a rotunda para, para easy lang na kuan sa bus turnaround. Then, it's divided into blocks. Ako lang itapad-tapad ang spaces. For example, mm-hmm. um, wait. Ganun siya, sir. Where is my graph? Ah, here. Yeah. So, the, these are the spaces. Blocks sila. Mm-hmm. because para madumduman lang sa tao, sir. Mm-hmm. Can, can you tell us like what those spaces are? Okay, so this is the terminal block here. Mm-hmm. This is also a terminal block here. This is the office block and the retail block. 
That is the food park here. Mm. Then this is a drop off area. Yeah. So I actually intervened with the roads. Mm. I don't know if it's. <laughs> uh, I have the authority, but yeah, I just put lang. Okay, that's good at them. I like that the plan is not the traditional plan. And then uh, I think it will look interesting uh, if you show us the man's eye perspectives. Like as you go, you have um, two minutes more to finish your okay. presentation. Um, so this, these are the. Uh, okay, I also already showed my ground floor. So concrete clads here. Yeah, then this is the uh, modular ramps right here. But I uh, like. Uh, as I said, for glass, kay dili, dili kay accessible ang mga bus. You have mm. to carry the wheelchair babara mo na. Then, mm. sa CR mismo, kay um, toilet nga color, portable toilets. So, yeah, you have to carry still the passenger nga PWD para mm. lang sila maka-access. So, I also included PWD um, restrooms every everywhere. As much as possible, sa ground floor lang nako gibutang ang mga spaces ka kinahanglan nga pa, uh, para like ma-access sa mga PWD easily. Hindi na sila mga tugtaas for CR. Mm -hmm. Then, sa, uh, sa second floor, I, these are lesser spaces lang. So, retail spaces, cafe, then the viewing deck. Then, di rin po na, no, mga office. Nalapas, sir, sorry, sir. Uh, these are the offices right here at the ass. Mm -hmm. Admin, yep. Yes, sir. So, back of the house is la. Then, open retail spaces, kina sa taas and canteen also. Sa mga makaunan. Then, wala na siya yung wall dito sa uh, terrace na siya. Okay, mm -hmm. Open air. Mm. Okay, so, skylight sa food park. Then, skylight was sa prayer room. Kaya, yeah. Kato mga Muslim, sir. Maybe mm -hmm. they want to complete their prayer. Something. So here are my sections. Um, these are coming three meters, uh, four meters, three meters higher. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And then uh, just one more minute. Okay. Ooh. So these are my sections. So uh one is my my curb you hug them dari then also, the repod curb you have done. Ang ramp is actually na as a liquid. Um, access for from SMC PCB. Like that. Okay. Then, panisha ka atrium, nitrium, dere. It's to shade kanang kanang mga gidere. And then, these are my perspectives. These are perspectives. This is from Kaohsiung Street. Um, Sir Yosmania, then SMC PCB Road. Mm -hmm. then this is an interior perspective. This is um passenger access can again like um sila, sir. check sila on sorry biahiran. Ah so schedule, yep. So these are my uh, um systems, the HVAC system, the electrical, the oh, very comprehensive, good cancer, and sanitary, switch. drainage, uh oh. my structural, then Kani siya sir sa impluvium ako lang gi. Ah, this is ako interesting. Get down. Um, I'll give you one more minute for that. Okay, sir. So, ah, uh, kani siya sir sa so una like they kaning too big from the impluvium kay ilang collect as kanang pang laundry nila sa so una sa Roman times. So sa modern times sir, mao ni siya ang layout sir. So ah, uh, from kaning na okay, collection dere then tapad na ang cistern o ang grey water then ang ilang ma ang makolek dere kay ilang i treatment dere yes then mm -hmm. ma distribute to siya do kanang pang flush pang labaser then also pang shower sir mm -hmm. okay. then, wait pang shower pod i sorry 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 no 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 it's only labaser uh, yeah like a grey water oh. matcha um, so, and agree what the actual water in big one? Sir? Na yung mga labas sa bus terminal. <laughs> no, sir. Like, kanina ah, okay. example lang. So, sa Easy. bus terminal, ang, ang atong gamitin anak kay for toilet flushing lang, sir. And also, kanaging mag, kanang mag-maintain sa 
sa termi sa sir, mabubuukan nung. So, yeah. Okay. I know, mabubuukan nung mag-i-i siya sa rain. But ang disadvantage ani kay if di siya mo rain, um, paan, dili siya makakollect of rainwater. But that's yeah, the Yeah, may problema na. It always oh. rains in the Philippines. Yeah. So, <laughs> As it's collected, um, makagamit na sila sa kuan sa tubig mismo from under. You know, makollect na to from here. Nila to pit. Okay, good. Uh, anything else? Um, that's all, sir. Okay, Bye. so let's see here. I would like to go back to like, uh, okay, let's start with your site analysis because it's a very interesting okay. slide you have here. You full screen now. Oh no, very full screen. Wait, that's it. I'm going to go to the screen. So I like the idea of, the, of having rainwater not just like as a tank but also part of the design. But it seems like wala siya sa plan. you just have like a collection area as a roof and then it goes directly to the tank, diba? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a, yeah. It would have been like it would have been an interesting feature if you have like a, a water feature in your plan just to show that Roman influence bit out. Okay. And then it could have made your interior uh, it could have been not really kind of improved, but it could have been another interesting feature in your interior. Mm -hmm. And then here <clears throat> you have 10 a.m., 6 a.m., 12 p.m. So that's very interesting. Uh, how did you figure out that diha ang 10 a.m.? Concert, kanina eh. Kaya siya sa Revit, excuse me. So everyone who has Revit has no excuse na kibaw na gits la asa ang sun during what time? Especially on their site. So sa 10, it's directly above. So it's going to be probably one of the hotter times of the day, like 10. And then 12 would be a little bit more to the west. So it makes sense that your eaves would be more focused on the western side, like uh, southwestern side. Awesome. Okay, now we have like about two more minutes for questions. How do I access your building from SM Cebu? Oh, okay, sir. Um, wait, as I go, sir. Okay, sir. From SM City Cebu, okay, now I access, access the IES. So. It's actually like a Swiss knife, guys. Like one, two, three. So mm. you can you can access there is a terminal ng entrance mismo. Kay naman sa mo access from the parking area, dali. Mm. Then, pwede po dere ka so sa terminal spaces. Then padong sa food park. Then pwede po dere ka sa office block. Mm -hmm. So one, one, two, three. Okay. Next question. Do you yes, think na gamay ra tao, mas gamay tao ganan mo ato sa food park kaya you have to cross like this road here? Um, inside yes, your sir, building? Yes, most likely kay karna sa tawag ane. Mulabang pa man, sir. Mm -hmm. So, did you have any kanang countermeasures or ways to attract people to your food park? Hmm. Uh, wala. I mean, like, I guess, kaning mas kaning yung muragbut nga na ko o answer na. Like, ma view nga sa food park, are you? Mm. Para, like, you, could, ma... you could also say na you make your food park interesting to look at, so they'll be yes, interested to go there because it already has a very unique floor plan. Do you have like an elevation of your food park or a perspective uh, that will show the food park? Okay, let me see, sir. Okay, wala ko sure. Katong aerial ni mo? Aerial na lang, sir. Hmm. Okay, here you go, sir. Hmm, okay. So, nindot na siya, i-take advantage yung ng curve shape niya, for that could be, like, um, for, that's just consideration now. When you ever have, like, this space na medyo liso the access, you could make it more interesting to people by giving it, like, uh, unique shape, like make them curious to go there. Mm. And then finally, let's talk about more technical stuff. How did you figure out the angle, say, mong bus parking? Oh, go answer like, ako lang siyang gi-addan five 
plus 5 na ko. May elevation ko. The, wait, what? <laughs> may uh, atas yung floor plan? Oh, no, where is it? Okay. Okay. Like, kani siya, ang angle sa bus is regular here sa so bottom left na okay, side. Okay, sir. Okay. Oh, ang angle sa parking. How did you calculate that, Bitaw? Uh, ako lang siyang subtract ng og 5, sir. Ah, sorry. Uh, Gimove din mo siya every, uh, by 5 uh, degrees. By 2, sorry. By 2. 5 by 2. Okay, so what do you think is the advantage of this kind of curved na parking or radial parking? Koans are mas easier siya i atras. I mean, like atras, then go sa exit, atras, then go sa exit. I'm not sorry. Ang radial parking kay, like, dili, uh, ang tao kay, like, makai walk around sila sa basa sila, where to go, then. Uh, specific na angle kay dira sila. Like for example, there is a departure bay. So dili kay nila makita ang sa arrival, ang departure kay diretso lang sa ano, sa from e-ticketing. Mhm. Mm there is a departure then for arrival, dili kay nila mak dire na nila makita ang departure bay in abot nila dire nga part so, ah, they're not air departure. Mm -hmm. So, ah, they're they're wala day kuan, wala day mo guideline on radial parking. Ah, wala ko ka includes. Mm -hmm. So, this is more kanang just to generate interest, to generate an interesting form to kuan. Oh, sir. Um, uh, create sort of a new kind of bus parking. Yes, sir. But mm -hmm. I should have put, sir. Ah, yes. Okay, Anna Langid. So, uh, I think the hotel natag time. So, I think this is interesting. From what I know, uh, don't, don't close your screen yet. Ah, um, okay, what okay. I know, um, we I talked to ang um, Osaka father sa tong student who designed bus terminal sa Cebu province. Um, only requirement nila is that it must be angled parking. And the reason why they want angled parking, kay 90 degree parking is too difficult for the buses. Okay, sir. So this might actually be applicable in the Philippines. Like uh, it might, might just need to be reviewed by some... Uh, technical expert that the bus can maneuver that well or it doesn't like impact the sort of performance of the buses. So this is a very interesting design. Uh, good job. And then, yeah, I'll put more notes in one canvas, but the presentation overall was better. Okay, I think you were more prepared. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, see so you good. Thank you very much, sir. No problem. Uh, okay, next we have uh, Mercado, Venice, or yeah. Venice. Mercado. Okay. Seems like we'll move on to the next one. Uh, D. Patrick. Hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning. I don't know where Mercado is. I think she forgot that I presentation. I posted this a week before. <laughs> Um, put on screen, sir. Yes, hit on screen. Okay, I remember the design. Yep. Okay, sir. So, for my design, sir, so the concept of my exterior is I just wanted to communicate a modern theme through the use of like triangular facade cladding pattern, just to mm -hmm. add like a sense of uniqueness to the bus terminals, like in contrast to its rectilinear, like squarish, rectangular form. And then mm -hmm. the cladding also makes use of precast concrete panels because I use this material because of its high flexibility and scope of architectural mm. expression so it can be molded or formed prefabricated into any desired shape and the panels mm. are also on um, purpose is they're used as somewhat like enclosures they also mm. act as backing components and a protective covering to the glass curtain wall from direct sunlight and then the fa facade pattern also creates like a unique unifying like identity and a cohesive like look just to make the bus terminal maybe more identifiable and memorable to people who pass by so it's they can, it can mm. easily be like noticed mm. and then i also made a play of contrasting dark and light colors so um, glass is dark and then the facade is light to add more depth and character to the facade mm -hmm. so here are some exterior perspectives so this is what you see along the open space uh, of my open space or park and then this is what you see here down below from Kaohsiung Street and then the one mm -hmm. here above is from the 12 meter access road perspective 
Sa SM. Sa SM, yes. SM mm. And then here are some aerial perspectives. So this is aerial perspective along the SM road. So the frontage in you know, SM road. And then this is the rear perspective along Osterio Osmania Boulevard or the 30 meter road. Mm. And then here are some interior perspectives. So to the top left, this is like the central atrium, atrium with the, the main stairs and escalator. And then here to the top right, this is showing the e-ticket center and with the waiting areas. And then here, the bottom left, okay, it's a ticketing counter. And then some ticketing counters are also included like but now I'm a um a lower counter for for mm -hmm. for PWD. It's ah, lower okay. a bit. Yeah, but I don't know why it's not zooming in. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, I see it, I see it. Yeah, there. There. Mm. And then here is this for the departure waiting area with like TVs and signages. Mm. That's very good. Okay, next. And uh, yeah. so for the site development plan, I'll be going through each major part. I numbered them. So start with number one. So number one is the bus terminal building. It's situated near the 12 meter access road to provide convenience to the pedestrians. It's the reason why I put it there. And also a setback shelf from the road also. From what I learned at the urban planning class, a setback on building so that it can be viewed properly from all sides. So mm -hmm. it can be viewed like by the people and then Good. next is scanning number two it is the passenger private vehicle drop-off area so so adjacent to the building like so that convenient weapon for the people they can just drop off here in front along the 12 meter access road this is also to give the cars a more private entry the private vehicles since this is a smaller road and it's like less traffic and then mm -hmm. up here's a, a number three okay these are pedestrian covered walkways to the to enter the building so that shaded on passengers as they go in and then if they're walking from sm yeah they'll be shaded and then number four okay this is an open space park so originally this part is the is a future expansion space but to make use of it long like, temporarily i just made it into a open mm -hmm. space park that can accommodate mga food stalls or any other shops so this is also along the 12 meter access road but near to sm near to the people where majority of the people will be coming from and then number five, this is the multi-purpose central open space. So this is like a flexible open space and have many uses. I also created a pathway so they can look at And also I added like maybe a, a, a fountain to add like more interest in the, in the space. And then mm -hmm. number six, this is the private parking spaces for terminal staff only. So this is to give convenience to uh, staff members who, who will be working in the bus terminal so that they don't have to pay parking in SM. So you can just park directly here and then next is the um, I, I added a multimodal feeder bay so this caters to um private vehicles picking up arriving passengers also taxis picking up arriving passengers is located along Kaohsiung street here and then next Good. this is the whole the number eight is like a whole covered walkway for arriving passengers so this covered walkway is also connected from the arrival bay to the to the pass um from the arrival bay to the feeder bay to the so that arriving passengers who will be coming in the who will be and who will be coming in the bus terminal can directly like go to the feeder mm -hmm. like continuous yeah and then number nine this is the arrival bus bay this whole like roof here it's roof so that um passengers will be shaded as they get off the bus also when they get their luggages from beneath the bus where they store it Mm. But covered puts it so protected so the luggage is not if ever na I rain or some or like kind of mm. bad very good, very good. I then, didn't even consider the luggages when I was like discussing in class, so that's uh, excellent. And then number 10 is the departure bus bits connected to the building, and then number 11 is the maintenance and bus stuff area with. Three idle parking and the maintenance spaces have a, like a small canteen, a resting waiting area for bus staff mm -hmm. and and other maintenance spaces. So McLaren is here. Here's a traffic analysis here, so a view. So for the traffic analysis, I will start with the pedestrians. So as mentioned, a while ago, pedestrians 
will enter. Majority of them will enter on the 12 meter road. That's why their entrances are located here. And then katong 45 degree angle covered walkway is here. So they can just like walk and then they'll be shaded. So protected so um, pedestrians. And then also the open space park here. So it's near the 12 meter road. And then for arriving passengers sir, who want to go to SM since more of medyo far ang arrival bay the site, I just incorporated mga uh, race pedestrian crossing. So arriving passengers who want to go to the open space or park or even to SM, they can just cross here. Mm -hmm. running pedestrian um, crossing and then, or they can cross here also. So there's two ways, but this is the sh shorter way now with their social to the open space or mm -hmm. park and then to SM also. And then for for buses, so uh, the bus entrance is in Sirius Osmania Boulevard and then the exit is in Kaohsiung. So this is the existing one on site. So I just followed it because mm -hmm. I noticed uh, the buses, they enter the 30 meter road coming from the north. So this is like the road favorable from buses, four buses mm -hmm. coming from the north. So that's why they just enter here. And also they exit in Kaohsiung because they use this road to go to, go to go back to the north. They use it. Mm -hmm. So I just followed it last year. So, so when the buses enter, they go to the arrival bay first, they drop off passengers. And from the arrival bay, they can either transition to for maintenance in the in the idle parking, if ever the bus need maintenance, or they can just go directly to the departure bay and pick up mga passengers and then go to the north after. And then for private vehicles, okay, there are two there are two circulation routes for them. So one is for the drop off here, so to meet the road for um for passengers who have like private vehicles who can like drop them to the terminal. And there's also one here for staff parking. So the reason why I put the Staff parking and entry exit along Kaohsiung Street is because I think Kaohsiung Street is the most flexible road out of all these roads. The Kaohsiung Street connects to many road networks. If you zoom out the site, it can connect to like mm -hmm. Fkabaho, Juan Luna, like that. And then feeder feeder mode is along also the Kaohsiung Street because what I noticed in the site, because the bus exit is here in Kaohsiung Street, a lot of taxis are waiting here the existing site along Kaohsiung Street, mga bus, mga taxis and other mm -hmm. private vehicles to pick up passengers. So what I did, I just incorporated a like, feeder base so that the, the taxis that are waiting along like the sidewalk supposedly solo na lang sa bus and then they won't impede, mga tra they won't cause like kind of disturbance of traffic the outside. So just go in and they can like lugar and yes, pick up passengers, also private vehicles. So what? So from the traffic flow analysis, I separated all the circulation they create like barrier free and conflict free like circulation so they really so they're like separate mm -hmm. it's very then, clear you have uh two more minutes okay sir and then for the site analysis sir so um building kai its longitudinal faces are facing north and south so this is like favorable for sunlight or daylighting but then it's, it's east and west also are like ang walls ang nag face direct ang shorter sides of building because I would I want to limit like direct sunlight, but for the wind kind of compromise yeah, because on um, longer sides is not facing the northeastern and southwestern prevailing winds. So that's the bad thing. And then the um, noise conditions that sir. So our um, building is in the middle, so it's buffered from the noise from the streets. Also the views uh, building can from inside you can view the serious menu road and the uh, SM road also. So for the floor plan, kay, what I did is I first like zoned all the um, office spaces to the left. So that I made sure na minimum floor area to accommodate for the offices to open up more spaces for circulation as well as for passengers. So mm -hmm. approximately only 20% of the floor area is accommodated for offices while 80, while the remaining like maybe 80% is for the passengers. So the ground floor mm -hmm. houses, the majority of the like spaces of the bus terminal, so such as like the seating areas here, e-ticketing and the information as you go in. This is what you see first, and after that you can see the ticketing counter. Or and then in the middle we have the central circulation, like kind of vertical circulation con elements. So we have escalators and stairs. So the reason why I put escalators is because it helps with distributing foot traffic aside from just having stairs, and also provide an elevator for PWD. And then behind it are the um, toilets. And then we have concession spaces here in the bottom right. And approximately 250, 250 seats for waiting areas 
to the departure gate, a uh, departure bay. And then so second floor circuit, it's dedicated as a commercial zone. So it's all like commercial spaces. So we have a food court. So it's divided into two. So one half is a food court, the other half is concession spaces, and there's still public toilets here. Mm -hmm. And then the roof deck is just for utilities. So we have like water tanks, solar panels, rooftop AC units. And then here are the elevations, sir. So I think okay. yeah. mm -hmm. and okay, try, uh, try to wrap it up. I have like a few questions before we end. Okay, so mm -hmm. here are some elevations, sir, and then the sections. And then uh, my floor to ceiling height is five meters because I wanted to create space for kind of piping like underneath the uh, above the ceiling below the beam for the um, aircon pipes. I noticed that they they require a lot of a lot of like space, so that's why mm -hmm. I did that. Uh, so you mean uh, floor to floor? Okay, not on floor to ceiling. Okay, on bottom when as a ceiling. So floor to I floor is yeah. five. Floor to floor is five. My floor to ceiling mm -hmm. is three point eight meters. So measure oh, okay. high ceiling. Yeah, point mm yes. -hmm. They drop by one point two meters from the bottom of the slab. Good. Okay. And, and then yes, sir, these are the sections. This is um yeah, let's plan. Your utilities. And then um HVAC supply supply dock in blue and pink is return dock. And mm -hmm. then here I for offices I did not centralize air connect, I put mga katong split type with mm. ACC units outside. Mm -hmm. And then same with the second floor, kay it's all centralized. And just to show the AC unit is here, so rooftop, and they drop to the AC room with the air handling unit, um, the ducting, and then here are some water supply, schematic diagrams, sanitary. So, akong toilets are in line with each other, so this creates more like an um, efficient distribution with the piping. Mm. The plan they're just in line, and then here, and then we have the structural also here. Um, for the elevator shaft, sir, I I wala siya na about sa roof deck because I use a machine roomless elevator, so this doesn't require a machine room. Elevator. Okay, good. Anything else? Um, I yeah, I explained on the precast concrete panels. Yeah, you did. Yeah, so I think that's it's, about it. It's a very good presentation. Everything is rational, like all the way down to even the toilets, the spacing, even the signages. I think they make sense. Um. I don't really have much questions, but can we go back to your canning site dev? Oh, which one, sir? This one? Or uh, the other first one? one. So already you can tell it's just from looking at I think it's because you're also in my urban planning class, so you know or you know my taste for site development already. So it's very clear and very straightforward now. This is where people come in, even without the arrows. You just need to label asa ang SM, asa si uh, Radisson, um, Bayfront, and the sort of the 30-meter road right of way. It's very clear here that uh, the building is oriented closer to SM because that's where the people are. And then I want to see, because you mentioned the shading for your buses. Do you have any drawing that shows how the buses are shaded by the roof like a section um i think it was here in the aerial view you can see how they are shaded ah, like this. okay can you zoom into that there so it really covers almost all of the bus now like uh, maybe let's say like 80 percent 90 percent of the bus yeah so how high is that uh, roof um as you mentioned, sir, the bus is 4.2 meters um, clearance. So I made it up around 4.5 from the bottom of the beam of the roof. So it's still like I can accommodate like really tall buses. Cause there's also short buses like this one here. This is very short compared to this one. Mm. So I'm not really sure how tall our buses here is at, at the series of Philips. Yeah. But I just made it high in case na it tall a bus. <laughs> Yeah, okay, 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 yeah. like in actual practice, we we'll change you until the very last minute. Now, okay, one of you need on bus height, so it's good that you made it taller just for like uh, the sake of having it, uh, making making sure that the bus goes in there. Um, are these getting um windows or what skylights? Ah, yes, skylights are for like mm. lesser, like an artificial lighting. I noticed some mm -hmm. bus. 
terminals like they have this skylight na silang roof para like mm-hmm. mas bright sa so at, yeah. yeah how long is it from one end of that how long is this getting roof or sh- roofed area I didn't um, long I'm with the like from um, the front of the bus to the back of the bus running roof sir mm gonna I wait sa plan Approximately, sir. So since Mural ang bus is approximately like 12 to 13 meters, so I guess mm-hmm. it's around 11. Since well, or 11, oh yeah, almost 12, siguro, sir. Kaya wala mo na shade ang the whole bus. Mm-hmm. It's just enough lang, like for the passengers to get off, mas shaded sila. And also when they want to get luggages beneath the bus, mas shaded lang kaya po. Yeah. So good. Um, I ask that because I don't think you need this big na skylights. Because it's open without light wall, so it will be very well lit. Na na check access to natural light. This is just uh, a comment lang for like your future designs. Okay, uh, sure. You might not need that much sky light. Because if you look at your rendering here, so left side sa rendering, you see ang shadows sa roof. Left side gamay, zoom in. You see the shadow of the roof there. Yes, sir. Mm. Ang light ni suod nagigit si mga roof structures is very bright. Mm, it's very yes, bright sir. in that area. It looks a little dark in Revit because it, uh, I don't know how it handles it. For if you do this in actual, the inside is actually kind of um, a lot brighter than what you see here in the rendering because you see the light almost going into the space, even though you have like an 11 meter width in a roof because of the angle of the sun. So um, my only sort of, the whole presentation is very good that's the only thing i'm um, nitpicking on a medyo dako ang skylight sa kanin mga waiting areas and maybe uh, the eaves could be a bit longer so that you don't have kanang uh sun penetrating like the waiting spaces or where the people are without okay. this is really the main issue with terminals at philippines we don't really consider the angle of the sun even with our departmental exam na People just use the same sort of location, pero they may change the materials. Pero ang roof eaves are still very short, so it will be very hot inside. Like the sun will still reach the weight, the sitting areas, because so that's um, a problem that uh, uh, most people, especially sa toang class, didn't really address a departmental exam. <laughs> But I think for your depart, uh, not re- for your plate here, it works. Uh, a quick solution might be this is just suggestions lang na pwede sir ka mo add the louvers to the top part of the roof or mas shaded pa so you can add more shade without inside mm, yes sir yeah. mm-hmm. i was actually just... considering that sir but i ran out of time yeah. i actually had that in mind when i louvers the top part yeah yeah so, ang problem po na <laughs> just yes, ang louvers the reason why we don't have louvers is because masangit ang bus <laughs> Yeah, oh, I think that's why also yeah. I didn't want to adjust any for the height sa ko on. Sorry. Yeah. So the taller the roof structure, must be such a shade inside kaya ang angle sa tong sun is really in a way na mo, mo penetrate you into the space. So that's a challenge. Like, that could be a thesis right there like how do you solve or do you create better roofing in the Philippines? So overall very good design. I have not not much things to ask. Everything is very well explained. Good job, Patrick. And thank, thank you, sir. Uh, Congrats. So yes, sir. hopefully I'm able to see Mercado. What month's Mercado? Is Mercado here? Venice? Uh, wala siya. Okay, we'll just proceed na lang. So we're a bit early. Uh, that's good though. So we can like end early. Uh, Tolo Russ, are you here? Tolo. Good morning, sir. Uh, there you are. Good morning. Uh, please present. So try to... Discuss your design in 10 minutes, so we can have like a back and forth question and a Q and A for another 10 minutes. Because we're I'm a lot I allotting I'm allotting 20 minutes per student, so we can discuss it then. Okay, sir. Ah, uh, kita na sir. Yep, kita na. So um, this um, Cebu North bus is a terminal that incorporates um, a multimodal a multimodal passenger safety and is sustainable so these colors um white and accent of wood gives the building a feeling of um, lightness and warmth so i also incorporate a courtyard here to increase um its natural ventilation and daylight in the middle of the building 
So the subtle play of light and shadow plays a special role in the architecture of the building and which it creates the image of it. So the roof is a stainless steel um, shape in a billowing wave-like form which inspired in Doha, Qatar airport. So um, the roof of the passenger terminal is made of molly grade lean duplex stainless steel. So here in the site development plan, um, the scheme is the scheme's objective is to arrive an architectural design solution for a multimodal multimodal passenger safety and sustainable architecture. So for multimodal, it integrates a provision for feeder modes. So the private parking areas are here in Gaussian Street and the um the drop off area is at Osmania Boulevard since the public transportation are commonly seen here in um in this area so um and is less moderately traffic there and continuous and flow sa um sa mga vehicles so the bus parking is um the bus is oriented in l shape so the bus parking here is is placed here near atara jisundu and the arrival bay is here in the Diriga uh, Ponsakoan, Radisundu Dapit, and the departure is in 12 meter access road. So, um, 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 the passenger safety, the commuter, uh, the commuter feels safe using public transportation because the drop of area is located at Sergius Mena where many vehicles and public transport passed by and also kanang nag incorporate cog street lights and ramps for pwd and um tactile tiles for um blind users or passengers so um so the use of uh, for sustainable is the use of passive cooling strategies um wherein i incorporated a courtyard courtyard or open space for less use of air condition and more on natural ventilation so ang main entrance or ang sa pedestrian for pedestrian users so main, main entrance nako is here in the Sergio Osmania Boulevard and pero nag place put ko kanang um pedestrian pathway po diri adapted sa um dere da pizza arrival bay para near put sa um dere as mga users dere as 12 meter access road and so dere so in um caution street no i sa sa site wala shay mga shading devices but there are several trees on the right which serve as protection from sun and to the pedestrian users so so design application I incorporate kay since ang Kaohsiung Street is located at northeast where winter wind is present so roof eaves or overhang are about 5 meters long to optimize sunlight exposure to the private vehicular or parking area and mo protect sa um, building from moisture moisture so since this site is on northeast where winter wind is present, I also incorporated a horizontal louvers so that the wind can pass through inside the um, building. So in the Sergio Espena, the site it has no shading devices or trees nearby. So, um, so um, uh, Sergio Espena Boulevard is oriented at southeast where morning sun and prevailing winds are present. So sa, sa design solution nga ako incorporate is na ay mga vertical louvers to lessen the penetration inside the building and also mga planters and tall trees, three ang apart. Para mo buffer ang air pollution sa mga vehicles and aside from the um, sa roof, isa po siya overhang slab to protect po sa sun and other local condition. 
also in I in the meter access is no shading devices gap born no no vegetation or trees here is the right side pero diya sa left is na ay kana mga several trees so in 12 meter access road it is oriented at west where sun or heat exposure is more present so that's why I have placed um, more trees to somehow buffer the the to somehow buffer the air and heat then on roof eaves are also measured about five meters long to cover the portion of the bus and also for protection for local condition so for the floor plan so for floor, floor plan mostly i um, place passenger spaces on the ground floor so this is the main entrance the entry entryway and the exit which is placed at the Osmania Boulevard. So as I said, the place put ko day as a, um, um, near at the arrival bay, mga entryway near at the arrival bay for users from the 12 meter access road. And so put diri ah, so diri ah sila mga ki, tanan. And also, um, so diri ah, diri ah ang arrival bay, diri ah ang departure. And also, nag-place kog duha ka um, areas for bus conductors and staff, staff for staff in the area rival bay and the departure bay. Diri ang bus parking and also the bus maintenance is na nakugi place diri para doon sa bus parking. And also, the staff canteen um, is placed here para doon na po sa stairs where my um, upper floor is mostly mga terminal er, terminal stuff areas as spaces and also na ako ay mga um na ay mga um several terminal areas or spaces here kay para ay mga important spaces lang like um security office office cashier and maintenance para kanang dili na sila mag ang mga staff nga na dili sa ticketing area or para dili na magsaka-saka sa sa taas. So um so mostly na sa upper floor is terminal mga spaces and uh, ang elevation ang sa section is ang um, floor to ceiling height is mga 3 3 meters high. Then sa second floor pod is 3.6. Then Laura, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Um, was there any reason why you used Doha, Qatar Airport as an inspiration? Sa, kay kuan mang good food sila, sir, ka ng, um, tropical architecture, ay, tropical, er, na po sila sa tropical area, sir, pa? And tropical which, ang Doha? I, I know, dili <laughs> joke. So uh, I think it's very dry there. Uh -oh. And let's see. I know, so the I ilangi koan ang stainless steel kay more resist man daw sa heat and humidity. Ah, yes. So it's very hot and humid here sa Philippines. So how does that? work na how does the roof resist heat and humidity um, um is it the shape or the material what, the material it? sir so how does that work um the texture and appearance of, um no, okay, no, okay. No. <laughs> I was just checking if na ko an reason. I'm guessing na ngano kana na shape or kana na material because I think it gets hotter and it the way air moves, it moves from um, hot to cold bitaw. So if there's a space na in it, the air will flow towards that. So usually upwards bitaw. So if you got a hot roof, similar to what um, Francis Carey did with his like schools. So the air will flow upwards, like so it will induct fresh air from the windows 
and then it will sort of go up into the roof. I think there should be some kind of exhaust system there as a roof, but we don't know. Okay, um, uh, even I'm not familiar with the uh, Qatar airport. You can also say that you want wanted to go for the wavy look, similar to like previous students. Like they want to show na okay, island mandao, so wavy roof, waves, islands. That's the connection. <laughs> okay, without you just need to kind of highlight without uh, na yeah, money ang reason na waves. Yeah, you don't need to know exactly the how it works, but it would help, bro. That could be something you can improve on sa in yung in yung fourth year. Okay, my next question here is, uh, how do we access from SM to your bus terminal? Um, there's a, answer, Mark. There's a um, public park. I, there are other Ah, okay. So Nemrug Park, they go through the park. Oh. Where, do you have like a perspective of that park? Ah, yes. I was hoping that, but okay, that wala. Um, really, it's a good idea to make them walk through a park. Okay? That's a unique experience in Cebu. We don't have a lot of open parks. Okay, uh, let's see here. So you have, I think, all of the de external design considerations went to the roof, no? Okay, mo mo main design feature ni mo. Yes, sir. Oh, Ang windows mora. Normal on the windows now? Yes, sir. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Mm -mm. Sige. And then you mentioned before na, uh, we'll, we'll wrap it, last question na lang. Um, it seems like the second floor, floor to ceiling is taller than the first floor. Is that correct? Okay, yes, sir. Is there a reason na no, mas taas ang second floor kaysa ground floor? Okay, um, Okay, ang roof mo good, sir. Sangyat siya. Ah, so tagali mo extra space ang yes, roof. Para ang um, high ceiling na po. Ah, okay. Kana daw, kana. Anong uh, section niyo? Uh, the second one, um, kita niyo ang shape sa roof. Zoom in daw. Kani, sir. Ay. Wait, can yeah, that. Section AA. Uh, Cross-sectional, yeah. Ah, uh, dili gyud makita ang second floor dili in spaces. Sa kuan ni the pit sir. Dili ang apart. Dili ah, ang... like shape level, there's a taller and a shorter roof. Ah, uh, maybe 3D na lang na view. Section A. Ah, okay kani. So, kada lang part na two floors and the rest is single floor. Ah, sir. Mm, okay, okay. And then, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, I think okay, the good na ang entrance is at Sergio Smenia. It's also a very kind of popular, uh, not really popular, but it's a very well used road. And then, as mentioned before, it's the current sort of entrance for the existing North Bus Terminal. So it would make sense na dia po kamu entrance. Can we go back to your site then before we end? Side dev. So I would just like to point out that just having a different entrance, this is for everyone, not just for us, really impacts your design. Could you imagine an a flip ni ang building, then malahi ang sort of entrance from SM to the building? It will be almost a completely different experience. So I just want to highlight to everyone that where you identify your main entrance and your exits, probably one of the bigger sort of impactful design decisions you have to make so you have to really consider where is your uh, best entrance so again a uh, pretty good dress uh, i'll have some more notes for you uh, in the canvas but overall very good presentation um my only note is uh we need to figure out like when you get a design inspiration try to figure out how that design inspiration works <laughs> okay sir Sige. Nindat na you got the shape, bro. Like, uh, it would have been better na how how it works, we would have known. <laughs> okay lang. Sige. Okay, sir. Uh, next, uh, Maria Ferrer. Are you here, Maria? Good morning, sir. Morning. Nana si Vanessa. Wala, no? Wala siya nabot. Sige. 
Uh, go ahead, Maria. So you have 10 minutes to discuss your um, design, and then we'll do a short Q&A after. Okay, sir. So after um, Maria, if wala pagyapon si Vaness, we'll go to Mondares. After Mondares, we'll go to Christine. And the last one for today is uh, Frances Arteche. Okay, go ahead, Maria. The floor is yours. Okay, good morning, sir. So um, for my North Bus Terminal, the main concept overall here really is traveling. So it is seen in the form of the design. So um, the direction, the uh, these uh, arrow-like shapes, Ganit, sir, from the building and the roof, sa passenger waiting areas represent arrows, okay, um, represent mm -hmm. here movement. At the same time, sir, the uh, overlapping of the roofs also show movement for the sa, uh, building, sir. Onya, the the design, the structure focuses on passenger safety, including the PWDs. So here, um, as seen in the plan, I here, sir, in the site development plan, sir. Kay, I made sure that the entrance is uh, near SM City. Kay, usually, sir, if um mo adto og bus terminal mo sakay pa ka og jeepney unya the jeep uh, the route sa jeep kay naaman na near SM so dira nako gi put ang passenger entrance as well as the taxi drop off and the pa private vehicle kay mas less ang traffic in this area unya one way rasia and then as the passengers enter the building uh nauna ang mga main uh, main spaces sir like the ticket booth para convenient for siya, especially for the PWDs. So I made sure that all spaces are going to be experienced by the user. So they pass through the building and then after that, they go right into the passenger waiting areas on the other side of the lot. So for the features of the design, I have an atrium here um, within the building. Kay, since the, the structure is sort of wide, uh, I wanted natural lighting and at the same time to maximize the uh, elements in the site also for the passenger waiting area here sir um i made like um murag in intersection na murag polycarbonate sheet sir para mo enter pod ang natural light instead na puro lang flat roof nya mo add sad siya og dimension sir and then so as the passengers go to the waiting area, my experience with nila ang park, niya ang marag, kay ang site mong good sir, kay abo, niya, uh, puro buildings, marag, lain kayo sa, marag, it's so suffocating ba, so, at least my experience nila ang kuan, um, natural mm -hmm. um, environment, sort of. And then here for the site analysis, so, um, the morning sun, kay, dili man kay na siya hot in comparison sa afternoon sun, so sort of um, it explains why then the orientation of my passenger waiting area is in Anna. Okay, if for example directly facing the morning sun ang seat sir kay init ka ayo so murag, at least kay na takilid siya gamay murag, um, how do you call that murif mo kuan lang kay mo bandal lang ang init sir ba and then here here on the the lower side sir na adira ang Radisson Hotel. So, in the afternoon, um, naaman siya sa west side, sir. So, ma maximize po ang existing building kay ma shaded ganit, sir. So, mauna, um, another positive point po siya na naiya here ang passenger and terminal staff areas kay it's not too hot. And then for the wind, sir, in order to maximize this also, um, because of the form of the roof, sir, kay mo create siya o gaps in between. So, Mo enter with freely ang um, ang air so um the design kay open open sa jud siya so ang mga air conditioned spaces kay ang mga offices lang jud and then there is noise and air pollution around so mana daghan kay sa trees also the trees add to the natural shade pod inig ko and for the kay inig sir and then mm -hmm. for the traffic um flow Kay originally the entrance sa uh, buses kay still here sir ako er siya gi maintain kay nanaman jud siya murag tanang 
flow gani sir nga dili siya hmm. samok ara lang na as is and then i that, followed that's the entrance of my bus diba mm-hmm, yes yeah, sir um hmm. i followed your advice sir kay originally ang exit for the buses kay same same place lang sir pero um para usara gid ang flow sir kay nagbutang lang ko ko andri exit here so instead na ang bus mo park ang buses here or yung exit dayon here di continuous yun na ko ang flow sa arrival bay and departure bay para one exit lang sila and then for the pedestrian um like i explained earlier it's here in sm city kay para accessible siya sa mga commuters so um open ni siya sir ang design so that means ang concession space is easily accessible ra pod siya so when the passengers uh, enter the building ilang una makita kay ang information system and the concession spaces para ma attracted pod sila ay gutom ay i need to go there so na inana sir um for my floor plan sir so this is how it looks like the ground floor so um para maka help with sa PWDs na pud siya tactile paving so nani siya different um surfaces for my ilhan nila where the restrooms and other spaces are so uh, earlier i mentioned na the the users will experience all parts of the um uh, all space sensor so mauna sila here sa information and then ticketing booth and then after they will experience the atrium sir where open siya unya um na asiya kana indoor landscaping sir as seen here in the um in the perspective sir so mauni ay sorry mauni ang atrium unya na asiya indoor na mga green spaces mm. also unya concession so and then after that kay i also included a bus maintenance uh garage so arrival bay departure bay so easily accessible you could see if ever there are problems or in need of maintenance and then um all the passenger spaces kay sa ground floor lang sir kay para um unsa na accessible siya sa PWDs nya the only spaces i put sa second floor are the office spaces or the terminal staff areas so nadira ang canteen and the bus maintenance staff so um since the bus ma- maintenance um area is over here sir so while waiting ma magwait man jud na ang mga driver so giduol ra nako ang bus um area for the bus uh, conductors and staff mm-hmm. so ara na siya and then um for the concession spaces uh, i designed it in a way na nagtapok ra tanan sir so it's more like um pinasugbo gani sir nga they can eat somewhere and then they can also dine outside so my experience mm. pud ang gawas and then mo na siya sa kung floor plan sir and then here in my elevations you can see the different heights of the roofs para maka sulod jud ang air and then what i did for the second floor na uh, roofing sir kay different heights pod ang rooms depending on which uh, roof height ang na uh, igo nila sir so for example here in my section sir um for example here um the closest roof kay kani which is 3 meters in height nya nag elevate man ang roof so lahi lahi pod ang height and then for my ground floor sir 4 meters high since um go inside man siya sa bus maintenance garage so para pod nga ma solid ang buses within the the building and then mm-hmm. aside sa main building ang in passenger areas kay yung roofs kay nag stair ay kay nang murag nag overlap pod siya sir so makita here um on the elevation sir like that on yeah, yeah. Uh, i added these um horizontal louvers in addition i additional na uh, shading pod siya sir kay there is a um there is a left side sir radisson hotel wala man kayo views dira so nader usually ang mga windows lang yung mga kuan so gi cover lang na nako siya with louvers para limpyo pod di hapon tan-on sir and then here are my exterior perspectives so this one uh this is uh, how it looks like from sm here in the passenger entrance and then this is what it looks like within the park 
sa Nasiay Pond, and then na yung mga anak park na seating. Um, and then for the passenger waiting area, mao ni siya, sir. Mm -hmm. um, for the interior perspectives, can you see for the staff resting area so they can oversee everything that's going on below? And then this is the choir and atrium, sir. And then the rest, I'm oh, sorry. The rest are the kuana, sir. Nap, nap. Utilities, and, um, okay. Let's look at your roof structure because I think this is the most interesting part of your design. Uh, Kato the one, the structural one. Ah, uh, here. Katong 3D near the end, kana. So what was the, um, I think you mentioned it before, what was the driving force or the concept behind this multi-level roof? Ko answer ka nang, based akong experience, ang pinakahangin jud na building na akong na sudlan kaya ang safa jud sir, niya ang notice na ko mm -hmm. is open jud yung roof, so mulusot ka jud ang air, I believe jud open mo, like sa sides niya sir, ba? mulusot ka jud ang air. I see being, yeah, but... Yeah, sir. So, mo na murag, dira ako nakaget og idea nga i-open ang kuan side sa roof. So, if ever mag-rain, ako pud siya ang i-overlap niya na ana siya uh, gamay na anggo para dili mo good solid ang rain water. So, mm, mo, so mong main consideration kay kanang ventilation para mas bugnaw. Yes, sir. Kay init man dira, okay. sir. Sige. So, what did you find out man uh, magline line mang level sa roof how will it impact your second floor spaces ko answer um ah wait um i'll go to the floor plan sir so here sir kay kana the second floor plan yes um ang roofs na ko sir kay wait uh, can i draw sir no see yeah for it um ana sir unya one ana so Ang highest elevation kay here unya magka gamay siya sir ba ana. So mm. ang second floor nga kailangan pud og kanang steady nga roof sir or kanang kay the rest are open man sir. So okay ra na nga mag overlap pero kanang spaces sir kay dira pud na siya na mag hagdan gani ang roofs. So mo inside mm. jud ang rooms sa kung unsay roof above. So so since kani pinakataas mo lahi lahi pud og height sa a uh, ceiling height for every room, sir, sa second floor. Mm. Okay. So, are those rooms air conditioned or kuan? Ko, naturally yes, ventilated na? Ang offices, ah, sir. Okay. Ang CR um, uh, is, is there. Okay. Is it naturally there? ventilated or covered uh, Covered by that roof there? Ko, um, you have a canteen. Mm -hmm. Covered siya, sir, pero na siya, windows. Mag typical nga CR nga, kung ano lang siya. Mm -hmm. air lang. Okay. Then, ang canteen, ano niya, is just for the staff? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Kay separate man ang food, mag concession spaces nga dining for the uh, passengers, sir. Okay, sige, sige. So, ako ang comment, like the, the floor plans could be developed a bit more. Uh, I'm not sure if sa, what they call this, the, the fourth year will definitely be more stricter. Kaya dapat na porma na gidunta ang floor plans at this stage, but it's better than before. So um, expect lang na that will be the, the biggest critique na ang floor plans kind of look undeveloped pa, but the idea is there. Could you show your katong kading bus terminal na perspective? Uh, the parking area of the buses, you had, you had a very good perspective for that. Uh, is it and that, answer? Yeah, zoom in. Yeah, that's the one. So this space looks very well designed, um, especially since you're playing around with the roof. So these roof elevations work really well for like exterior spaces. Um, issue, uh, sort of the biggest weakness in Wang design is you try to apply it with your bus terminal building hood. Na mm -hmm. it, probably caused you more headaches than uh, <laughs> needed. So, mura itong rag nakuti bita kasi mong building. Okay rag yun ang building is normal or ka nang dili kayo dynamic tanawon because you already have this existing space. So, I guess my advice to you is um, you can have one major feature in your design na murag bungkag-bungkag o groove or crazy dynamic design and the rest can be just 
standard design lang. Okay, this will be your main feature. And mm -hmm. what happens if you try to make the whole thing sort of bunkag bunkag mo na ma dili na kay nindutan ang kay if you look at your uh, terminal building na kay render sa terminal building. Uh, this one, sir. Yeah, so go into your terminal building, zoom in a bit. So it's kind of competing for this space out here. Na okay ra gyud ta if simple lang gini siya na box lang. Okay, na naman kay mag dynamic na shape diri. Pero yes, this is the strongest feature of your design is the actual bus parking, loading and unloading area. The building itself is a bit underdeveloped. Pero I think you can still like uh uh what uh calculate kung makalusot pa. Um but um yeah, I'll let you know. Overall, it's not 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 room for development, but I think the concept and the execution is there. Uh, can you show me your utility diagrams again? Okay, your lighting there, electrical, mechanical. Uh, where's your plumbing? Uh, yes. Ah, okay, there. Sige. Okay, so it's complete. Uh, basta complete yung drawings nindot na for the grid. Okay. Uh, I lang I can expect not to ask you the grade. <laughs> okay, that's right. Basta pasar okay na na. Sige. Yeah. So mo na ha sa fourth year ligi dapat han ay na emong archicad and then the floor plans should be seen, the walls should be seen, and if you have a landscaping area, you should show where the pathways are. Pero the again the main feature of this design is the bus terminal parking. And loading and loading areas, and I think that's one. Uh, that's well done in this submission. Okay. Sir, thank you, sir. Sige. Okay. Next we have um, China Mundares. Good morning, sir. Sige. Uh, you have ten minutes to present, and then we'll do our Q and A after. So this is my um, terminal building. So this is the aerial perspective. Um, the main feature of my um, um, design is the plazas. So, so here in the site dev, um, you can see that both ends of my site have plaza. So this is the front front plaza and the back plaza. So the for the entrance of the pedestrian, for the pedestrian um, from the SM, I allotted a pedestrian crossing here, and then they will pass through the back plaza going to the main building. Um, so, ang kaninga area is naadiri ang ticketing area. So, if um, madrid so lang sila o buy o ticket, na right entrance, na other entrance here. And then the, the one here, kay going na ni siya sa um, straight to the departure bay or um, and also for the waiting area and the, this entrance here are going straight to the concession spaces so um the main concept of my building uh, of my design is um, um the safety of the pedestrian or the pedestrian access so um wala ko nang provide o crossing from the departure bay to the arrival bay since I intended to um, not let the people cross gani the the street because um kanang naanaman siya different spaces intended for the main terminal building and the departure bay and then naapoy other spaces intended for the um, arrival bay so mm -hmm. I don't I don't need this the I don't see the need to put a crossing pa kay Morag for arrival and then dito na uli. and then for the mm -hmm. departure kay waiting depart and then going to where they are supposed to go mm -hmm. and so um the for the kind of site site analysis maoni shadari maoni shadari ang um path sa um sun so here and my building uh, my building the main terminal building um they have um long Roof is ganit, sir. So, um, the people can be shedra from the sun, and also 
for the for the kuan sad for the rain. So going to my floor plan. So mo na siya ako floor plan sir. Na ani siya ay um mo ani siya dere ang katong entrance, the first entrance from the back um park go from the SM. So na ni dere mo ni dere ang door from to going to the ticketing area, and then this the ticketing room, the toilets, and then here from eight the ATM machines, and then. I allotted um, a waiting area specifically for the PWD, the senior citizen, um, and the pregnant people, pregnant women. So, kanira siya, sir, and from my entire building, um, um, has air conditioning system. Gani kanira nga area. Kaya the rest of it kay open spaces, um, open na siya, sir, and shed by the um, roof. So this is the flow of my bus. So. Um, ako as yung divide sir, pa, ang kay ang ako as yung intention, ma divide yun ang departure bay and the arrival bay. So I divided it with the main road sa bus and then mo ni Shadery. Kaya ako mas alpo ng gi gi think sir nga more exact to gito imong gi suggest nga less ang roads para more spaces for the landscaping and mas safe for the people. So mo ni Shadery, ako ang close sa bus and then nadery ako drop off entrance area and drop off area. And then exit there sad siya sa bus nga flow. And then maoni siya ang ako ang second floor. So same ragi hapon, na ragi hapon dere ang ang area nga na ay kanang air conditioning system. So these are the kanang administrative offices and employees lounge and canteen. So and the rest of it kay open rush open rush sir. So it has a high ceiling and good for ventilation. Ganit sir. So the air can pass through mm -hmm. Rasad, and yeah, more ni siya ang akong longitudinal section and cross section, sir. And next, going to my elevations and my mechanical drawings, na sir. Mm -hmm. And perspective. Can you zoom in a bit? <laughs> so mechanical. Ah, okay, sir. Wait. So, okay. kani sir, sir, ako ar siyang giusa gi sa ground floor ang electrical and mechanical diagram since gamay raman ako ang mechanical diagram, sir, kay kani naman nga area ang na ay aircon. Mm. Air yeah. Mm. Siyang giusa sa electrical. And then here sa second floor mm. and then my plumbing systems and my structure. Wait. Plumbing system? Zoom in the so plumbing system? For my plumbing, sir, kay same or such as sir, kay inline na gani. Ako rin gito yung nga inline ra ang toilets. Naraman diri ang toilets nga parts, sir. And ah, okay. Paning. I'm just wondering Naraman why sir. black siya tana. I did, sir. <laughs> and I color. Nara, sir. Lang dyan. Ah, okay. And I color dila makita. Pero kaning black na space, unsa man niya? Black na space, sir. Like, up, space. like on like grids one to six there's a black area above on the second floor are those windows ah this one sir yeah sir um ah, over okay. windows na black siya kay na zoom out oh yeah okay. sige so, i was wondering what um, that was so mona siya ko ang oh wait lang sir so this is for my perspective sir Kitara, sir. Um, Kitara. Siya, um, perspective. This is from a view from the bus entrance near road. Mm. And then this is the back back park with the pizza SM. Mm. And then the concession spaces inside the main terminal building and mm -hmm. the stairs. No, I like the look of the timber. Are the stairs fully timber or is that, is that just the rendering? For answer, um, ako ang kana na kay kanang timber gud siya. Kay para mo fit gihapon siya sa timber look sa ako ang entire building. Kay poros mang kukahoy, sir. Ah, okay, okay. Nino coming pud ang timber with the concrete, nindo siya tanawon. And then, yeah, that's a good that's a good concept. Uh, what, are these like exposed beams on purpose? Yes, sir, exposed beams on purpose. Mm, okay, okay. So, yeah. so yeah, let's go back to your site, Dev. 
So you can start the Q&A. I wait to ha. Sige, Bayfront Hotel. Sige. So what other spaces are there on your open parks? Can we have open park lang like uh, not much else? Um, the front open park, sir, has concession spaces. And in then, red, and that's a red, oh. Kaneng, this one, sir, kaneng blocks and squares. And then, mm. nasa flower patches. I intended it to be really open, sir, since I want the um the site to be inviting gane. Mm. So, mo na ako intention, sir, sir, ngano open kayo. And and these um long, long blocks here, kay sitting areas, na siya, sir, kanang murag built-in nga mga seats gani. Hmm. Mm, ma or na siya, sir. Then sa back park? Same or siya sa back park, sir. And I, wa siya maklaro diri, sir, pero naansad ni siya ka ng mga benches diri. Nga mga, mga, mga benches diri nga area, sir. Nag-line sad siya. Sige. Uh, I think the biggest sort of question here is, what if someone in the arrival bay wants to go to SM? Mm. Yeah. What, 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 <laughs> <laughs> so I think in all your designs here in the future, you need to go on, uh, consider that the passenger and user will need to go to like whatever spaces there are like adjacent to the site. So you have to like consider that. Uh, I think that's the biggest sort of missed opportunity here. Let's go to your floor plans. Okay. That's not a really big problem, pero sayang lang bitaw. Okay, sir. Okay. Zoom in a bit on the departure bay. Okay. So maintenance rooms, area for conducting. Ah, so it's very open. Okay. ATM, schedule board. Uh, where is your, uh, there's the ticket area. Okay. That's the only air conditioned part. So they go in here and then that's so enough. Yes, sir. Mm. So I'm missing kanang ka elevated manisha no? Ang kanang air, anang departure bay. I'm, yes, sir. I'm hoping na nasha yung rag step up. One na siya ka step up, sir. Um, wait lang, sir, ha? Kanira siya, sir. Nanira siya. One step up ra from the mm. from the edges. Sige. Okay, I'm not third year from man. Pero just consider lang sa going to fourth year that usually um for example kay SM Bahaun Mangyud. Notice ang SM also has several steps up. Mm. Pero I think for the bus terminal a good would be kanang maybe 0.5. Okay, hantod sa tuhod bitaw ang baha. So that would have been a good consideration a step up mm. around 0.5 meters. And then let's look at your arrival bay. The arrival bay is really just the buses and the concession spaces. Ah, yes, okay. For you, shed, 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 it really kind of tries to capture this open sort of airy in a look. Yes, sir. I think, can we go to your renderings again? Okay, the floor plan is very straightforward. Uh, that's the only thing that's missing. Na he step up lang siya para sa baha. Okay. And then I'll double check if na meet na meet pa ni mo required spaces na. So yes, sir. Be fine. So let's look at your renderings again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. This one is from the back park. Yes, sir. Okay. Next one. This one for the bus. Okay. So the my only comment here is that the buses themselves are not shaded or roofed, so they could have used some protection put. Um, can you left side the bus? The bus areas on the right side are well like protected, so that's a mm. small, small sort of opportunity there. And the next one is the concession spaces. So, take a look. So, I think the lighting here is yellow, lang no, for the, this should be the same color as the material. So, the stairs in the image. I go on, oh, ang lighting here, sure, sir, kay sunset, maning a light, mm, it's like sunset, and then. And it, Mm. When you try to do your entourage, or like when you're rendering, so you need entourage, you know, people walking or using the space. Kanisha is very good for me. It looks like an art daily or like a magazine photo. 
So this is a very good sort of rendering. It's just really missing people. And I like the idea of, we mentioned this earlier, na butang at lovers para malandong ang sulot. I think this is like a good example of that. I'm not so sure if pwede yun ma fully timber ang columns na inanay ka dako. Usually when columns get this big, they're you they're cladding only... sir. Oh, pwede pwede mo cladden, yeah. pero it's a bit kanang sayang bitaw na butang ka column niya, tabunan ni mo og wood niya. Murag sayang ang wood para nako kay just like let it be concrete kay. It's concrete. Mm. It's kind of kanang hiding bitaw. So I'm not a fan of that. Pero nindot siya na look even if this will be concrete, I think it will still work. Maybe the wood accents will really be the stairs, Jen, because your louvers, definitely, they can be made of wood. So mm-hmm. you can still have the same color palette. Um, let me see here. Have I rendering the office spaces? Wala. Wala, sir. Ah, okay. Sige. Okay, this image here is really, I think, what your whole design is going for. Very natural, very open. And I think this is... It's very, can you color sa Imong floor tiles, nindot po. Does it color any niya? Did you specify a material type or did you just look for something gray? Concrete lang siya, sir. Ah, okay, okay. Sige, I think that's pretty much it. A few missed opportunities here and there, but overall still good. Uh, thank you for that. And then thank I'll put you, some more comments sa imong canvas. Thank you, sir. Next, we have uh, Paul Christine. Good morning, sir. Morning. Okay. Uh, share your screen, and you have uh, ten minutes to present, and we'll do a Q and A after. Okay. Um, so this is my proposed Cebu North Bus Terminal, and this is my cover page. Um, that would be the. This would be the man's eye view, perspective view of the building and site from the SM Access Road. So. This is a view most of the users coming in from SM will be seeing when they first enter the sites. Now. Um, so the proposed North Bus Terminal is a two-story structure set along the side of the lot that's adjacent to Radisson Blue's lot. So it's mostly rectangular in plan, which you can see from the straight walls here with concrete materials actually and this cladded stuff. But it's enclosed by this prominent parametric roof shell, which you can see here, and it's made of indigenous wood materials. Um, this is meant to sort of reflect and even pay homage to Filipino indigenous materials and aesthetics such as plastic weavings and mats and fish nets like what you mentioned before, sir. And because it will be made from indigenous wood materials from the Philippines, um, because of course, not only does this material give off a pleasing and warm look, it's, um, they, they're also more economical because they would come from the Philippines itself and are also less harmful to the environment. And I wasn't really able to capture it accurately, sir, but the panels are actually meant to give up this sort of translucent screen look, like from the Taho Tsingyun Town roof shown in the pictures here. Um, I wanted to give the structure a lighter or airier look, so the same light feeling can be carried over to the passengers themselves. So this is just to improve on the user experience. And as for the site, same goes for the site itself for the presence of large parks and plazas here because um, like you mentioned before sir there really aren't a lot of public parks in Cebu so I distributed parks around my proposed site as you can see and sorry um, it's basically just a lot of open space and stuff like that so um, moving on um, my frontage is as the no, my frontage is facing SM because, um, like you mentioned also, most of the terminal users will be coming in from this direction. But I also added access points from Sergio Osmania's side because one of my main focuses on this proposal was passenger convenience there. So even if the main access is from SM, um, if there are users coming in from the highway, they would still be accommodated. Um, another thing I focused on is Accessibility. So I integrated curb ramps. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there are curb ramps here. And I also integrated tactile pavings all throughout the side. So these are the tactile pavings. And I positioned them at the sides because they would maximize the user's safety and convenience more. Because in my proposal, the sides have a lot of um, open spaces. So that um, I'll be explaining why later, but yeah, the, it's safer for them to pass through here. Um, I also added bike lanes throughout there, um, 
the reason for this is because um, there's um, because there's actually a bike parking area in this area in SM. And I also noticed a lot of bike, some bikers like passing through in this area. That's why I integrated a bike lane here and also out. And the bike lane has like a sort of buffer. Um, this is because most of the bike lanes in Cebu aren't really well integrated. I noticed um, they kind of act like a yes. sort of, <laughs> yeah, they just act as like after another lane for the cars or like a parking lane. That's why I added the buffer so that it would really separate the bike lane there. And another focus sir, I um, I had on this project proposal is basically um, multimodal feeder base. So there's a taxi loading and unloading bay, jeepney loading and unloading bay, and also the private vehicle drop off points is here. And if they want, they can also park in case they want to, if ever they want to wait for um, the passengers. So this is my site analysis. So um, for my traffic analysis, so basically, um, this would be how pedestrians, vehicles, and buses move throughout the site. And so, as mentioned before, the main frontage is here. So, the pedestrians would, since most of them are coming here, they would just go here and there. They just have direct access to the, they have direct access to the terminal. If they come from the jeepneys and such, uh, they can come um, pass through here. And um, if they come from Fuji of Kenya, they pass through here. Um, the for the uh, private vehicles they will just go through here and drop off there and if they want to park like i mentioned they can just go here and for the bus the main entrance is Sergio Asmenia because um so i've actually made it so that the circulation throughout the site is direct and mostly one way meaning the cars and um, buses don't have to do a lot of backing just to get to the main points um <clears throat> this is what and i also made it so that it would already adapt to the existing traffic um, circulation in the site all throughout. So in Sergio's Mania, for example, um, the the circulation is already here. Like um, this side, this lane is for people coming into the north, and this one is going to the north. And same with the calcium. This is how the actual traffic goes. So um, because this is coming from the north, that's why my bus entrance is here. So they would just go to there. They wouldn't disrupt um they don't have to turn to another road to enter and so this is all uh, my bus circulation it's just mostly really one way and direct so i also minimize minimize the amount of pedestrian and vehicle intersections as much as possible to ensure the user safety by this i mean um the ped pedestrians don't have to do a lot um within the site though um the pedestrians don't have to cross the road so that they could get through the terminal, they can just pass through here or here if they come from here. Um, um, only unless, only when absolutely necessary, did they have to cross the road. And for the climate, sir, I actually prepared a sun study video here um, for one year, um, which is meant to represent um, how the sun interacts with the site for one year at 12 p.m. So that's how the mm -hmm. shadows would move throughout the site, um, throughout the site in one year. Um, at 12 p.m. So, so um, as shown in the video, actually, most of the structures in the site actually provide sufficient shade from the noon heat. Can also be seen in the sun study here. Um, so, while my site is mostly open, users still have spaces where they can relax and cool off from the heat. So this can be true, especially if the doors are open, because it can maximize wind flow this way. So, um, while oh, yeah. the building itself. Ah, yes, sir. Yep, I'll ask a copy of that video, huh? <laughs> uh, sure, sure. I'll just yeah. messenger it to the sir. Yeah, uh, pwede, kung, kung di, if it's too heavy, just send it to Gmail because that's very good. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Um, so the building isn't really um, um, oriented to directly catch the, the, the wind, but there are actually doors around this side of the building. So if ever on a low heat day, it can be opened and then the wind can pass through there and enter the building through there so moving on uh, these are additional perspectives so it's really mostly open space and i sort of uh, repeated the sort of netting pattern around the uh, around from the terminal building to the other structures here uh for the food stall sir um instead of what you suggested i i wanted it to be a multifunctional space 
So I just made it a shed type, so it can be used for stalls or it can also be used as additional shaded seating area. So that's why it's just a shed. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the entrance from the suggest menu road. I also integrated the sort of tube sculpture thing that was in SMC side. It's like a smaller version of it here on the plazas. So okay, moving on. This is my ground floor plan. As I mentioned prior, said I wanted to focus the wow factor here. So this is why the waiting area is this sort of open space, um, sort of open space, uh, open plan like that to make the space feel wider. I provided information booths and on both sides of the um, both sides of the buildings to accommodate the arriving and also the boarding, so that they can if they enter. When they enter, they can just go there and like they have um, something they want to know, they can just check the information systems there. So, and I also provided vending machines, uh, vending machines and um, water bottle filling stations, not instead of the drinking fountain. So this is because um, after the pandemic, uh, we as a society, I think we just more be, would be more comfortable having social distancing and just um, um, not drinking from water fountains, I guess. And, <laughs> and next, I also ensured that the staff and passenger spaces mostly do not clash. So I distributed my staff spacely, spaces mostly to the upper right, because this is where the service entrance is, and the uh, passenger spaces are at the lower left. And in the spirit of accessibility, I provided tactile paving. So I just separated the layouts here because it's very messy here. Mm -hmm. So. So this is my tactile pavings. I basically added where there is um, um, significant obstructions or like anything important. So where there are uh, ticketing booths and stuff like that. So this is what I meant by having an open space here, as you can see from this lobby perspective. So this is because um, when I saw the pics of the South Bus Terminal, it looked more enclosed with low ceilings. So I wanted to diverge from that so that people would feel more comfortable in an open space. Of mm -hmm. course, as well after COVID, it's more preferable to have enough airspace between people. So that's why it's just a lot. I wanted it to be more open, though um, the ceiling isn't very high. Said so. Um, moving to the second floor, it's smaller in footprint than the ground floor. This is because I wanted the space to be more focused on function and concessionary spaces. So this is why the um there are only concession spaces here, and for the staff, there's just um, staff rooms such as the office spaces like the admin office, the public relations office, and an additional staff lounge and canteen. And the other utility rooms are also here, like the AC room. So this uh, this is more my uh, second floor perspective. I also repeated the sort of wood motif in this floor. And this is my outdoor garden. I wanted it to be something like um, SM Seaside's um upper mm -hmm. rooftop garden but like a smaller version of it that's why i integrated it um this is my lighting layout so the, the um i think the most notable is that uh, i use this uh rim system sort of lights here so this is this i just wanted to give it a more uh circular look i guess around the circular mm -hmm. columns and and this is my elevations. This is the view from SM Access Road. Uh, this is the view from um, Radisson Blue. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is the view from Sergio Osmeña, and this is the view from the side of Carlson Street. So this is my section. So um, I wasn't able to indicate it here, but my ceiling, um, my ceiling height is actually four meters for the ground floor and. Uh, four meters at its highest, and uh, up for the second floor, it's 2.7 meters. I wasn't able to indicate it long. Um, um, so this is to um, give, this is so that um, there is enough space for the utilities, such as the toilet, uh, the plumbing, and um, HVAC uh, utilities. And this is my plumbing layout. Yep. No. Okay. I can see. Uh, yeah. This is my plumbing layout. So since I 
concentrated most of the plumbing uh, uh, toilet areas and plumbing areas in one side is just concentrated here. Same for the second source is concentrated in this area and um, the sectional, I, I, I got confused when I tried to do mm. the section, so I just gave blow-ups and this is basically how it would look. The, the orange are sanitary for the waste and the green are the vent stacks and blue is for the cold water supply. And this is my HVAC layout. So, so actually my building is pretty enclosed, so um, that's why I provided um, HVACs throughout the building. Um, this is because even if um, it would, since my ceiling isn't that high, so I think it would be better to have um, HVACs. And also because mm -hmm. um, Philippines is really hot and anyway, so I feel like a lot of people would um, be more comfortable with uh, HVACs and stuff. Uh, there's uh, the split type is only for the reception area, uh, for the manual ticketing area. For most of it, it's centralized. So this is my layout. And this is my structural isometric shirt. Um, I use 300 by 600 mm beams, and this is um, this is just um, for the uh, for the for the web connection to the parametric roof. It's mostly just conceptual, since um, I, I don't think a lot of us have um, a lot of experience with parametric roofs. So yeah. This is just conceptual. Okay, conceptual. <laughs> Yeah. Even me, I'm not even <laughs> told, I don't know how that will work. That's usually what they use. Bro. Uh, maybe a more experienced architect can like figure out really like the sizes, the strengths, etc. Ah oh, yes, and I also really wanted to actually just um, like in other parametric rules, they just sort of integrate the beams into the columns. But I really had a hard time trying to do that on Revit. So mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's a good attempt. Um, I think um, I think I'm done, sir. Yep. So sort of uh, this is a good segue. I think what's ev what's on everyone's mind now is like what what drove you to make this parametric roof? Like what is the oh, and what's the inspiration for it? If you go back to your kind of like exterior perspective. Mm, sir. So actually, um, I think I mentioned it before. So I said that. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. For those who are uh, who are just. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll just repeat myself, I guess, because um, mm -hmm. th this is because, like, when I search for pavilion architecture, it's really, like, parametric, and a lot of them are parametric in design. I wanted to sort of bring that into the design because I wanted people to have a more unique experience to, like, um, this is why I also have a lot of open space, because, like, it, it would, it's my terminal idea is basically just, like, a really, like, a bigger version of a park. I think like the mm. pavilion is just like ah sorry the the terminal building is like a pavilion basically that was my idea sir. Right? Mm. Okay, good, good. So I noticed the material of the service garage is different. So oh yes. Yeah, in their perspective, it's one. Uh, is it still parametric or is it just like a, a box? Or oh, that's mm, a that's, curved roof day. It's, Hmm. It's actually a box, but the roof is still like going with the flow. It's just a different material, so that it's kind of like distinguished, mm. distinct from it. Yeah, to separate it from that. So, so is it it's a bit big? Um, is it like two level? Ah, uh, no, sir. It's just one level. It's just that it's like um, it's the roof, sir. I think, and also because <laughs> um, um, just to accommodate like the bus heights since we're not sure how tall the height of a bus is and the door is like four meters because that's like, like the the is that the the door for the bus mm, like about four meters high i would just yeah. suggest in the future now since this is a utility space you could have just made it like a flat roof lung so it doesn't like stand out so much mm. Uh, mm. yes sir. Uh, this is in the middle of the site the, the, the location could have been better Bro, I think we did. Ju we just didn't have time anymore to like reconsider the location. Um, uh, yes, sir. Okay, I think I uh, one thing I want to highlight again. Go to your site dev. Here, sir. There, yes, that one. 
So I like the way that you highlighted the cut off or the uh, curb drop off ramps, I mean, basically just ramps on the sidewalks. So I, I think a lot of students don't draw them in because it's really a hassle to do it in Revit. Sort of, uh, so I would suggest for those who are watching, uh, if you don't have time to put in little details, you can just label it. That, say that it's there and like, um, you don't actually need to model it. You just put an insert image because what, for me, what the teachers will be looking at are the floor plans because that's really the most important thing. So if you're trying to sort of save on time, I like this way. In, uh, uh, but Christine here modeled it because she has very good time management skills. So whenever you're like short on time, it's very good to like use symbols in your site dev. Uh, even in the other drawings that Christine showed, the blow-ups or just like repeating uh, drawings you already made to make key plans is really useful um, and hopefully will save you time, not, not just for oh, and Christine, but for everyone. Okay, um, let's go to your floor plan. Okay. okay, here. So this is what I was saying that the site key plan is very important, especially for a uh, design that has multiple buildings. It helps orient your reader and the person you're presenting to. And I like the idea of separating the ground floor tactile pavings. This is me more just like saying how good your drawings are instead of like having questions because <laughs> they're very good. Now, uh, a few students okay. really asked now, how can I draw my tactile pavings that dili maguba akong plan? So you just like do it on a separate plan. <laughs> <laughs> it's really the only way to preserve sort of like uh, the legibility of your drawings. So uh, can you zoom in a bit sa floor plan? So you can clearly see na, na separated ang um, staff areas and then the waiting areas over here, maintenance, ana siya. Office, do, do, do. okay, so it makes sense. Uh, not much issues here. I think we already went through this several times during the month. Um, I just wanted to highlight how uh, neat everything is. Okay, uh, second floor. Okay. Oh, I also noticed that there doesn't seem to be any doors, or are they all sliding doors? Uh, where's the um the concession spaces? Yeah, the concession spaces. Uh yeah, I I just left them uh, doorless because like I think since they'd be rented out they the whoever will rent it will um decide where to put their doors i guess ah that's, okay that's true that's uh, but usually you can also say in uh it's like the roll up type ah roll yes, up so. type door so you don't see it in the plan you just uh, i don't know how we represent that like standard i think there's a different ways of representing roll up doors so again yeah, uh, we get over here and oh. let's see let's look at your bus parking spaces uh, in the site, sir. Uh, um, do you have any one? Um, rent, yeah, could be the site, could be the rendering. Here's sorry, here's sort of, sir. But anything, I think, yeah, a here, good view, any good view. Um, mm, I think this is the only best view. Ah, right? Could you it's zoom in? This one. Mm -hmm. ah, okay, let's look at the buses. I want to see how much of the bus is covered. Ah, uh, the idle bus parking is not covered, sir. Sorry. Ah, uh, okay. Pero the, that's fine because it's idle bus parking. Man, the loading and the loading is covered, like fully yes, covered sir. or almost all the way. For the, uh, for the boarding, sir, like the departure bay, it's fully covered. Mm. Uh, this this one is basically ah, covering okay. like almost all of the bus, but this one is a lot less covered though. The arrival. Mm. Is, is there any reason to that? Um, other, I think it's because I was gonna, I'm going to guess it's because you don't want to cover up your parametric roof. Uh, somewhat, sir, but also because um, this thing just couldn't reach it. <laughs> um, ideally, yeah. like I really yeah. wanted to make it reach there, but like mm. I don't know, it was so hard because it would yeah, break. Yeah, design. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the cons uh because Revit has like a massing thingy sir and like it would break the structure basically. Mm -hmm. So um basically conceptually it do doesn't, but ideally it should cover its head, sir. That yeah. is my what my intention. 
Yeah, maybe if it actually gets built, the parametric will go all the way to the arrival bay, the parametric route. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that was my idea, sir. Okay. And then I think finally, can you show your video of the sun path again? That's like my favorite thing. <laughs> How did you one? Is this all Revit? It's just Revit, sir. It can actually just give you a sun study like this. Uh Sir Agas taught us. Oh, ah, okay. I think we should just make the standard then. How, how how difficult is it to do the video? Like how long does it take to set up? Um, so it takes so a long time because like depending on like the your CPU actually, sir. Like it makes it. It sometimes it would even fail, sir. It's like ah, bugat like processing. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, sorry, sir. Ah, okay. A friend. I just had some time last yesterday. Yeah, okay, good. At least not any chance. Could you play it again, uh, but slower? Ah, uh, okay, sir. Like, uh, highlight the time. So, whoop, whoop. let's uh, see. Yeah, so, this it. is, I'm going to check the dates. So, this is January, it's... March, April. Could you pause? Ah, <laughs> uh, sorry, pause sir. Uh, okay. What date, sir? Um, let's say June, middle of June. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. this is it. Okay, June 18. So, this, I think, we're already experiencing a bit now. Na March, April, June, July ish, mm -hmm. atong hottest months. Now I'm already feeling the heat now. So notice the um, shadows in this diagram is almost directly on top of the building. There are very few on, um, angles. Na basically, the sun is on top of your building. So it's, there are almost no shadows on the side. And then if you go a bit more to December, those are colder months, June, July. Oh. Maybe there. Oop, oop, oop. There. Okay. So you see, there's mm, it's not so clear that you can see there's a bit of an angle. Um, I think it's because the sun is on our basically the bottom right side of the screen, and the shadow is moving to the upper left side, so we can't really see it. But I was hoping that to show that in December there is more sort of angle to the sun, and it's like uh, you have longer shadows basically because it's cooler or uh, something like that for Dikesha Makita as a screen. But anyway, good attempt. Thank you so much for the extra effort. Um, I would really like to get a copy of this. You don't have to send it today, like within the week long. For I'm sure you have not okay line deadlines. Ah, okay, sure. Okay. So thank you yeah. so much, Christine. Uh, very good presentation. And then hopefully, Frances, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm here. If Dili Makaya sa connection, maybe we can just uh, pass along sa Wednesday. Try lang daw. I'll try lang, sir. Okay. If I die, then okay. Wala tayo mahems if maputol lang internet. No, no, sir. It's loading. I, I can see the screen, yes. Sir. Yes, I can see the screen. Hello. Uh, hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Sir? I think there's a bit of a delay or lag. Sir? Okay. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, okay. There, there's like a five second lag between to communication. Come, but you can go ahead and present. Okay, sir. So this is my bus terminal. Um, my design centers around pedestrian access and accessibility, and it's also um, centered around universal design. So as much as possible, I try to make the design inclusive and accessible for all, especially for pedestrians, because um, this is my design concept. So my design concept centers around substance. So the proposed bus terminal aims to bring more substance to the urban areas around it. It needs to elevate the space not only with the aesthetics, but also through an innovative way of planning that prioritizes pedestrian access and public space as opposed to vehicular access. So, 
sorry sir so my design um my design is basically divided into two spaces the front of the site is facing a front is dedicated to a plaza and the rear of the site is dedicated towards the bus um, parking spaces and circulation so as you can see here um the for the public spaces a plaza fronts the site facing bayfront for pedestrians and the public to use there is a space allocated for a night market towards the right, an open space for playgrounds towards the left, and a small private vehicular access for here um, towards the front. And then the paths I provided are also wide enough for biking and jogging and like leisure walking for, for the pedestrians. Landscaping was also added for a better experience for the users. So I also added a covered walkway on both sides of the site. Um, it's for the pedestrians to have a more comfortable way to access the site. The walkway matches the facade of the building for unity. Form of the form and facade. So the building is curved in form and in line with the SM parking building and elements in Bayfront's design because there's some ele curved elements in Bayfront's design. Blue elements were also added since blue is the prevalent color with the surrounding buildings. So this building sir is out of my comfort zone because it's curved and it's not really because i'm used to like more neutral or natural color palettes but in line with the planning and um because i wanted to have unity with the surrounding buildings i used a more like modern um international kind of style that incorporated blue with as in with like sm and bayfront and then the curved elements also match the building surrounding it so towards the right of the site, there is a space allocated for public gatherings such as a night market or like Subu Mercado or farmer's market on the weekends. So this is a aerial view of the site. As you can see, you can see the paths. And then here is the proposed night market setup. So there's um, seating, areas for seating, and there's also areas for a bunch of stalls around the site. So this is the covered walkway that opens towards the plaza. This is the waiting area, the entrance area, and the close-up facade view. So for my site analysis, um, I just I conducted a couple um, site analysis here, but because of the heaviness of the file, there I wasn't able to render all of it. So I was able to print the sun path at 12 p.m. during the summer solstice and the sun path at 12 p.m. during the winter solstice, which is um, June 21 and December 21. So as you can see, there's a green a uh, real difference here and then you can also reference this to the sun path that i also put in there so this is my site analysis i think it's based it's really straightforward sir so the orange arrows signify moderate traffic and the green arrows signify light traffic so for my traffic analysis i went over this a bunch of times in my consultation I was checking if I was still connected. Um, so the buses enter through here, through the back of yep. the site, yeah, and then they, they can park. Well, that's sir. So they have the park, and then I'm sorry, and then <coughs> and then um, when they want to leave, they can just easily um have parking and then exit through the same road. So. There are no dead ends in the site, and as much as possible, I tried to make the buses like not have any 180 turns so that it will not be hard for the bus drivers. So, in addition for like easy pedestrian access, the bus drivers also won't have a hard time navigating the site, so they can just easily roll in and then roll out towards the exit. Um, as you can see here, sir, because it's so small, but tactile tiles surround the site for easier access for pwds or people with vision problems so here is a close up of my tactile tiles so they're incorporated around the along the perimeter of the site and then this is my site development plan so i think this is also pretty straightforward so here the spaces this is the plot in front and then to, towards the back you have the vehicular access and then towards the left of the side i also provided a small green space for sari sari stores facing serious my boulevard so really there's like a lot of space for um vendors or businesses to open up to the, to the public so towards the right there's also a private waiting area for those coming from sm so this is my ground for a band there's a glow of this in the next page sir but um a few highlights so i added here 
there is a race pedestrian crossing to add safety for users crossing the street. And for, as per your advice, I added a minimalist playground and open space over here. Um, the covered walkways of Masa Facade for Unity are over here on either side. And then this is my ground floor ma plan. So a few highlights for my ground floor. So when you enter the building, you can users can easily access the passenger information so that they really don't get lost, the ticketing area, and the bus schedule, ATM, and e-ticketing area. So after they get their tickets, they can go through either hallway, past some concession spaces, and wait here. So here, there's like a concession area for like a bar for people waiting. There's public dining areas and. Um, an indoor play area for the kids. For this one, sir, for accessibility, I added a sensory room separate from the playroom for people with autism or sensory issues, which makes it more accessible to everybody. So here you have the waiting area, and here you, you can see that from the plaza, people can easily access the ticketing area. So for my second floor plan, it's basically the same thing. Um, you have the concession spaces and waiting area only because the service spaces are on the ground. Unity below is key and paper. And I use orange seeds, complement blue, since blue and orange are sort of complementary colors. <coughs> um, this is the outdoor dining area that front uh, that is adjacent to the concession spaces on either side. And then this is a close-up of the facade that I made. So this is my front elevation, my right elevation, uh, my rear and left elevations. Uh, my sections, and that's all, sir. That's all for my design. Okay, good. Um, I think you can turn off your video so to help the connection. Okay, sir. Um, I will share my screen. Uh, hopefully, this will help. So I have just a few questions then. Uh, let me open it up over here. Go to your submission. Uh, Arteche. Okay. Oh, that's fine. That's a departmental exam. Oh, so many papers to check. Okay. Uh, I know we talked about this several times uh, during the consultation, but and you also mentioned it earlier in this presentation. How's the audio quality? Manungogra? Yeah, Madungogra, sir. Okay. So um, let's hear. The concept is uh, substance, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, uh, substance to the urban area. So how did you arrive or how did you find this concept? Uh, basically, sir, for my hotel, I related it to our planning lectures and Ms. Hollis talked a lot about unity and talking about like the surrounding buildings, which is why I went outside of my comfort zone for this plate, sir, because I'm usually mm -hmm. uh, used to just square plans with na nature because it's easy. it comes easiest to me. So for this one, sir, I took a look at the surrounding buildings and I tried to incorporate public space because I noticed that around SM and Bayfront, there not, there's not a lot of public space on like Ayala where you can really mm -hmm. walk around. So not a lot of people walk around SM and I would like to elevate the place in a way where like people will want to be able to walk around. I, I want mm -hmm. to give them an opportunity to walk around and, and the addition of business spaces also elevates the place wherein like there will be a safe space for businesses to be able to operate because in Ayala, in Cebu Business Park, there's Cebu Mercado. In mm -hmm. IT Park, which is also owned by Ayala, there's also Subo Mercado, but then I'm not really familiar. I, I don't really know of like a good, safe, outdoor business dining place around SM. So mm -hmm. this elevated space. Mm -hmm. And for us, for Unity, sir, I chose to incorporate blue, which is also my comfort zone, and curves to match SM and Bayfront. Okay, good. Okay. So uh, just one note here. Um, I think it's because you were uh, short on time. The public open spaces, this, uh, not, not really the public open spaces, but these drop off areas, was it intentional that you made them kind of more gray? I know, so that was a pre made. Yeah, yes. okay, I get it. Okay, it's I get hard. It. To and, make uh, just something that really like time. stands out. For, I know you're like, uh, that won't be a major issue. I'm just wondering if that was intentional. <laughs> okay. And some other things that we mentioned earlier, 
Now, it's good that you have some shading here for the buses. It, uh, I just realized uh, we didn't have time to talk about it because we we're focused on the main building. Uh, for your future designs, uh, if we ever have to design a bus terminal again, I think we need to like add a bit more eaves or like um, overhang for the roofs in the bus area because it looks a bit too small as a final. Okay, uh, that's just something to note for later on. Uh, let's go through your site plan, yeah, ground floor plan here. I already we discussed this several times now, but for the sake of the people watching the video, uh, future um, third year students. So we basically ended up with this circular form because like, um, why was it again? Why did we <laughs> go for the circular form? Actually, it wasn't my scheme, sir. And another time where you were like, you can keep the curve, but then you can also make it straight. And I decided to keep the curve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's also like, I think we just wanted to do something different. And um, because we already have a curved building, it makes sense that the plaza is also following the curve pattern. So it's more sort of like uh, coherent. And then we have our passageway here. And uh, basically, the Office spaces are in the middle, right? Yes, sir. Yes, and then the public spaces are in the exterior or the periphery. So very straightforward design. Like just look, but just by looking at it, you can already figure out uh, where everything is. I'll just blow up plan over here, and you also have the and um, what do you call this? The sort of what would you call this? Scanning the the materials. <laughs> of the areas are also shown in the plan. So I don't have much questions because we already went through this like several times. Um, I can't think of any questions that we didn't already address. I'm just like trying to anticipate like for the future students without, we chose this pattern for the elevation um, because we wanted to keep the sort of curvilinear um, shape of the building, basically repeat it on the facade as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, so you recommended that I play with just the columns and the ver the vertical and horizontal elements. Hmm. Plus, it, yeah, yeah. It, really, it really fits. Like, if you look at the perspective, Raga, the pattern fits with the site. So we have uh, curvilinear elements, and then the building itself is curvilinear, so it makes sense that the sort of the motif is also very uh, sort of a bunch of half circles uh, repeating the patterns on the site. Okay, not much else here. You also have a proposed night, mic, night, mark, night market set up, so that looks good. Uh, let me just, uh, for the sake of uh, having questions, let's look at the utilities. Oh, we also discussed this. <laughs> so these are air-conditioned rooms here, and everything else is um open air and this is the second floor mm -hmm. um, and then this is the electrical okay let's just look take a look at the structural one more time a uh, very straightforward uh post lintel construction and then a final perspective yep Again, uh, very well designed. There's just a bit of cunning messiness uh, drawings, but I think that's because you're just like short on time. Um, some other sort of minor details would be like for your fifth year. Um, I, I know these are imported chairs. <laughs> but, uh, when you get to like fifth year, uh, even all the way down to the chairs, we have to at least make it uh, look a bit more like the building as well, or like just like make it fit into the site. Because um, uh, I guess the, the, the curvilinear chair also works, or maybe we should have also some like uh, shaded chairs as well. So that's all. Um, oh, there's this like gray thing here. I think that's a render that didn't finish rendering. No, sir, that's Radisson. <laughs> oh, wow, that's Radisson. Okay, let me just note to myself. Yeah, I know I'll forget this later. Uh, this is Radisson. If the site context doesn't really add the facades of the surrounding buildings, it just adds the massing. Radisson. Okay, that's good. That's actually very useful. So if Radisson is here, it would look very nice, actually. Now, Radisson is there. Now, it's sort of your building complements Radisson in a way that, yeah, that's actually very good. Uh, if we had like an image of Radisson here, it would look 
read it'll fit really well okay yes sir i, I tried to look for perspectives of radisson but then none of it really fit mm. so I just... yeah okay again i can maybe like uh, some photoshop over here ah okay nice so i think that's something that i also want to encourage with the next batch like we'll find ways to put in the site context into the render okay not much questions here because I already know you basically know your plan inside and out already. So good presentation. The timing lang na dili mayang internet. Thank you, sir. Okay, so that's all for this batch. Um, most of you did a good job. Uh, pretty much.